ओके देन गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन लेट एस कंटिन्यू विथ अवर पोर्सन वी आर डन विद द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ सी ए इंटरमीडिएट डायरेक्ट टैक्स दैट इज अ चैप्टर कॉल्ड बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट वेर वी हैव स्टडीड लाइक अ जनरल इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट इनकम टैक्स एंड हाउ अवर पोर्सन इज गोइंग टू बी प्लेस्ड हाउ आर वी गोइंग टू लर्न ऑल दैट वी हैव डन इन द इंट्रोडक्शन बिफोर वी गो अहेड टू अवर नेक्स्ट चैप्टर वी आर स्टार्टिंग अवर सेकेंड चैप्टर राइट नाउ आई वॉन्ट यू to repeat that one line and that one line you have to take it as your geeta quran bible agam guru granth sahib whatever you believe in you have to take that as your as your holy book because everything that we study all throughout our portion is strictly dependent upon that one particular line so please can someone someone nahi all of you please repeat that line for me together you can say it please imagine that you are sitting in a classroom and you are participating start income tax is payable by every person in each assessment year on the net taxable total income earned during the previous year correct this is going to be your main line on the basis of which we are going to study everything in this we have studied what is person we have studied what is previous year and we have studied what is assessment year and at all times you have to be clear about this in your mind very clear about this in your mind which is for your exam the applicable previous year for may 22 and november 22 exam which is the applicable previous year previous year 21 22 and the assessment year applicable is going to be assessment year 22 23 why is it always important because every year there is going to be something called a budget which will convert into a bill and finally it will be passed and it will be called a finance act and it will bring amendments to our main income tax act and we have to study which amendments the amendments which were brought by the finance act of 2021 and thus applicable previous year 21 22 Assessment year twenty two twenty three. Tell me, are you following? So the applicable finance act in your exam is going to be finance act of two thousand and twenty one. Okay. So person previous year assessment year concepts over, and now the time has come to go and calculate two things. If we learn calculation of two things, our syllabus only will get over. what are the two things that we have to learn to calculate to finish our portion income and tax income will be your net taxable total income and once you calculate the income on that income you have to calculate your tax liability based on the tax rates that i will give you but before we go to calculation of income we are now supposed to study our second chapter a chapter called residential status and scope of income you cannot go to income calculation unless and until you have studied this chapter residential status and scope of income without this it is not possible to go and learn calculation of income this is very important to learn why what is the idea behind the chapter what is this chapter there are two ways of learning option 1 we can directly start learning section number section 5 has given scope of total income section 6 has given residential status we can directly start learning that but that will not make things clear in your mind you should always know the reason the purpose behind learning something why are we learning this chapter what is the reason once you know that then everything that will happen in the chapter will become very easy for you and i am going to tell you that purpose first give this as many stars as you want this is one of the most 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 important concepts of international tax international tax mitro In CA final, I told you there is an elective paper called International Tax Optional. Means you can 
choose that or economic law or capital market or risk management anyone that's a choice paper paper number six and what is our paper number seven in ca final direct tax which is a compulsory paper of 100 marks in this you don't have any option you have to give this this paper seven direct tax also for those who don't know let me tell you today is only 70 marks direct tax and 30 marks international tax means international tax is applicable in ca final for compulsory 30 marks and optional paper 100 marks that optional is an option if you like tax you take that subject if you don't like tax you have hatred towards the subject then you can choose anything else but this is compulsory everyone has to study and those people who love tax who want to give international tax they have to study 30 plus paper 6 100 130 marks of international tax in ca final and whether the 30 marks direct tax wala international tax or the 100 marks elective paper this is the most important concept of international tax in your entire portion and this is going to lay down the roadmap of your chapter residential status what is this concept understand globally that means can i say worldwide worldwide there are two principles on the basis of which governments collect tax obviously we are supposed to study only the indian income tax act 1961 we are not interested in income tax act of pakistan or new zealand or australia or bangladesh or nepal we are not interested in that but once we talk about international tax we need to know a little about everything there are some countries in the world which don't have any income tax. There is no income tax in that country. We call it a tax heaven country. Not heaven, no? not this heaven. Tax heaven. No income tax. For example, yes, the plus 971 students. Mumbai, Mumbai, nahi. Dubai. Dubai, you said Dubai. Uh, UAE. There are some plus 971 students. UAE may there is no income tax because their government has got huge revenue due to the oil wells that they have. But the future of the country is under a big question mark because they are selling fuel to the whole world and they are earning money by sale of fuel. But the whole world is moving to electric cars, electric vehicles. So probably that economy can collapse in the next 10 years. Okay. You have to always keep in mind what is going to happen in the next 5 years, 10 years. Especially if you want to be an effective stock market investor. You have to think about 5 years after today. Not what will happen tomorrow. Your thinking should be a little long term. But let's not get into that. There are some countries which don't levy tax. UAE is an example. But there are some other countries which levy tax. India for example. Thank God India levies tax. That is how I also get my bread and butter. So India has income tax. Yes or no? Whichever country in the world levies income tax, it will levy on the basis of two principles. One, the principle of residence. One, the principle of residence. And second, the principle of source. One, the principle of residence to the principle of source relax relax let me explain don't worry that sir i have not understood i have not explained only anything okay i will explain this with the help of the examples some examples okay naresh hi naresh good morning naresh if i ask you some personal questions you will not get offended no, it's only participation in the class, huh? only for example purposes. Okay, Naresh, uh, when do you plan to get married? After Okay, so because we belong to the Rajasthani Marwadi community, in our community, uh, the parents are just waiting to auction us 
So the moment they even, in fact, they don't even wait for us to clear CA. If we have given the CA exam, they assume that if you have given the exam, you are going to clear and they start preparing for the auction. So they are going to get a very good price in the auction. That is how it works. So let's assume Naresh, you become CA in 2025 and maybe in the same year because it's a May attempt. So in November, December month, you are getting married 2025 December just assumption you are getting married supposingly you are asked that where would you like to go on your picnic immediately after marriage post marriage picnic and I ask you to choose a location today so you choose your date later you choose your spouse later you choose the venue later but I am only asking you to choose a picnic place don't say Ahmedabad Surata somewhere outside India where would you like to go Switzerland again Switzerland is again another problem which this is a country which does not uh, exchange information with government of India for tax purposes it's a big controversy Switzerland uh, has got a lot of Indians who have concealed their money over there so Switzerland may not work and by the way that is not the right season November December is not see you have to focus on the geography also in the months between November to April the northern hemisphere is not good for picnics geographically you have to go in the southern hemisphere so your choice should have been australia new zealand by default and in the months of november december jan feb indians generally go to the countries called australia and new zealand generally okay so let me change your venue i am changing your venue supposingly you go to new zealand for your picnic okay you will carry some money with you new zealand dollars yes, yes because you will need the local expense you may have booked your flight ticket your uh, uh, food may be booked uh, in advance uh, uh, your uh, the new zealand is known for uh, activities like uh, bungee jumping sky dive those uh, sports related activities very popular for that and uh, these activities over there are uh, very safe and thus very expensive but you have booked everything in advance at uh, discounted prices hello you have booked everything in advance but one calculation went wrong. Your wife, normal people eat thrice breakfast, lunch, dinner. She eats 25 to 30 times in a day. Every 15-20 minutes she is hungry. Every 20 minutes she is like, I want food. I want food. Well, I am hungry. I want food. I want food. Every 20 minutes she is hungry. Now it's a newly married wife. You can't tell her that I don't have food for you. What kind of a husband you are, if you can't manage food for your wife, then what kind of a husband you are? She will leave you. You will have to come alone when you are returning from New Zealand to India. So you finish all the money that you are carrying. You finish all the balance that you have in your credit cards and debit cards. You are left with nothing and your wife is still hungry every 20 minutes. But there is no money. Now what to do? So now what you do is, for those three, four remaining days of your picnic. Return ticket is booked. But there are three, four still remaining days. You take up a part-time job in New Zealand. Well, I will work every day. Work at some store. Work as an employee somewhere. I will get salary for the day. And with that salary money, I will go and bring food for my wife who is hungry every 15-20 minutes. In short... The story is simple. Can I say a person from India, a resident of India, whose ordinary place of stay of Naresh is where? India. Has gone to another country called New Zealand. And he has earned income over there. What is my example? Mr. N, I am taking Mr. N because it is Naresh in our class. Who is a resident of which country? India. And he has gone for a picnic in which country? New Zealand. And over there in New Zealand, he has earned some income. Obviously, you will be earning in New Zealand dollars. You will not be earning Indian rupees over there. But for example purposes, I am converting it into Indian rupees. Say it is rupees 100. Example. It is an example. Anyways, 100 rupees means 2 New Zealand dollar. Your actual income will be higher than that. But I am only taking this amount as an example. A person from India has got income in a foreign country. So what will happen? What will happen? 
this country your country of residence that means we call it your home country is going to take tax on this income and that is called the principle of residence the home country is going to take tax on this income and we will call it the country of residence india is your home country no where have you earned the income new zealand but india will still take tax because we are your home country if we are your home country we will tax you this is a very important statement we will tax you on your global income we will tax you on your world income income earned anywhere in the world it will be taxable if you are a resident income earned anywhere in the world will be taxable if you are a resident of this country and this country will be called your home country so what is my question is the income earned in new zealand taxable in india for naresh yes because he is a resident because he is a resident and that is known as the principle of residence the principle of residence will be applied by the home country now listen next question next question will new zealand also levy tax on this yes because the source of income is in new zealand if the land of that country this is what i have discussed with you before also when i was talking about foreign company if the land of that country has generated profits for you it is your duty responsibility to repay some portion to that land and that country will be called your host country and because it is your host country it is the country where you have the source of income you will have to pay tax in new zealand also and that is called the principle of source and this concept does not apply just in india this concept applies everywhere in the world wherever there is income tax in the world wherever there is income tax in the world there will be two principles what are the two global principles of levy of income tax the two global principles of levy of income tax principle of residence and principle of source the home country will apply the principle of residence and take tax on income earned globally world income will be taxable in your home country and the host country will apply the principle of source and you have to pay tax on whatever you have earned in that country or if i have to put it in an effective example please understand if a resident in india is earning income please understand india will take tax from that resident on anything that is earned where in india outside india where anywhere in the world global income is going to be taxable global income will be taxable but if you are a non resident in india what are you who are you a non resident in india then will you be liable to pay tax in india yes only if the income is generated in india on the principle of source let me conclude see if you understand this see if you understand this if not then i will repeat everything okay therefore if you are a resident in any country you have to pay tax on world income you have to pay tax on your global income means income earned anywhere in the world will be taxable if you are a resident of any country then you have to pay tax on income earned in that country income earned outside that country income earned anywhere in the world is going to be taxable if you are a resident, resident. correct but if you are a non resident or first time i am writing let me write the full thing if you are a non resident and now we will not talk about other countries let's talk about india 
if you are a non resident if you are a foreigner if you are an outsider will you be paying tax in india ever or never, never. sometimes you will be paying tax in india when on any income that is earned in that country resident will pay tax on world income and non resident will pay tax on income earned in that country and now let's talk about this in the indian context let's talk about india how will india collect tax because ultimately we don't have to study international tax in intermediate we have to study international tax in ca final it is that i teach inter and final both that is why i am the only one who can tell you these concepts anybody who is teaching only inter will not know these concepts only okay these are international tax concepts but if you know this then understanding the chapter will be very very easy globally there are two principles of levy of tax what are the two principles residence and source if you are a resident of a country you have to pay tax in that country on your world income global income income earned anywhere in the world will be taxable in that country but if you are a non resident in any country then the principle that will be applicable will be the principle of source world income will not be taxable but income of that country will be taxable and now let's convert it in the indian angle if you are a resident of india then you will pay tax in india on income earned worldwide globally worldwide global income if you are a non resident in india you will still pay tax in india on income earned in india in india on income earned in india that is called the principle of source so residents on world income and non resident on indian income and that is the reason why we need to study i have just i have not taught you anything in residential status i have only taught you why are we studying this chapter every time you start a chapter you need to know why are you learning the chapter the purpose the objective of learning the chapter then only you will understand what is being taught in the chapter why are we learning residential status because under residential status pay attention under residential status we will classify the assessee guess classify the assessee into which two categories resident and non resident resident and non resident and what is the impact or reason or purpose of this classification if you are resident in india then world income will be taxable if you are a non resident in india then indian income and this is scope of total income what is under scope of total income what are we going to learn what i am speaking right now residents scope is world income and non resident scope is indian income that is scope of total income so once you understand residential status the other part is this this is a scope of total income in short for you this chapter if you observe the name of the chapter carefully what is the name of the chapter residential status and scope of income what is scope of income this what is in front of you on the frame right now this is scope of income residents world income non resident indian income resident world income non resident indian income but for learning that scope of income you will have to first learn this no unless and until you know the meaning of resident and non resident how are you going to be able to learn the scope of income that is not possible so we will learn the chapter in two parts part 1 residential status and part 2 scope of total income are we clear on this what are we going to learn in this chapter and think about it think about it in the main sentence that we have written connect everything with everything huh? we have to learn two things no because person previous year assessment year is over we have to learn calculation of ntti and calculation of tax without this knowledge without the knowledge of scope of total income without the knowledge of this this is it possible to calculate your taxable income in india because because if i have got income in dubai i am a resident in india so my income of dubai will be taxable in india so if you have to make a list of my taxable incomes my dubai income will also be coming in my indian taxable income but at the same time i have a student sitting from dubai liana is sitting in dubai and attending the class 
she is a non resident in india she is not residing here if the same income is earned by her she does not have to pay tax in india do you understand the difference so that income will come in my taxable income but will not come in her taxable income which is why your computation of entity i cannot be done unless and until you know residential status and scope of total income my question right now is simple first of all have you understood what is the chapter that we are doing and the purpose of doing that chapter okay if yes then answer the following question and the more you participate the better it will be for you assesses will be divided in two categories that's the first part of the chapter what are the two categories resident and non resident and the purpose behind that classification is the second part of the chapter scope of total income because once you are a resident you will be paying tax on global income world income and if you are a non resident then you will be paying tax on indian income that's part 2 scope of total income are we absolutely clear okay if you want to know the section number scope of total income is given in section 5 and residential status is given in section 6 if in case you are interested in knowing the section number section 5 and section 6 residential status is section 6 and scope of total income is section 5 but as i have told you at your level till the time you understand the provision and you are able to solve sums on residential status or computation of income section numbers are moderately important if at all you have to learn any section number i will tell you to learn that section number otherwise focus on the concept okay so we are first going to study the first part of the chapter that is residential status and this residential status will be studied assessee by assessee the rules are different first tell me what are the seven categories of persons seven categories of assessees under income tax who are liable to pay tax individual huf company aop boi firm local authority artificial juridical person correct and the rules of residential status are given assessee by assessee okay so if i have to put for you in short divide the assessees into the following categories first individual huf and all others others means this will include firm company aop local authority ajp everyone for individual huf this is the classification given in the chapter first the assessee can be resident or non resident from now onwards i will be writing this short form will you be comfortable if i will write nr res for resident and nr for non resident yes and once you are a resident for individual huf there is a further classification an individual huf can be resident and ordinarily resident this is a classification resident and ordinarily resident or resident but not ordinarily resident or we very popularly in short call this ror and r nor ror r nor so what is the first classification in individual huf resident non resident resident non resident and what is further classification of residents ror r nor resident and ordinarily resident resident but not ordinarily resident this is what we have to learn for individual huf and as far as the other assessees are concerned who are the other assessees company firm aop local authority artificial juridical person they have only this much only this much resident or non resident no further classification into ordinary or not ordinary that means can i say the difference is only this much otherwise all assessees will be classified into resident non resident resident non resident resident non resident only individual huf will be further classified into resident and ordinarily resident resident but not ordinarily resident and do we already know the purpose behind classification of resident and non resident resident will be paying tax on global income non resident will be paying tax on indian income 
because the rules are different for different assessees we will have to learn this one by one assessee by assessee we will have to learn it one at a time the first assessee for which we will be learning residential status is going to be individual individual means natural person human being we all know the meaning just like the seven categories of person we studied one by one the residential status also of all of them we will be studying one by one which is the first assessee for whom we are learning residential status individual once this will get over then we go to huf then we go to company firm aop etc one by one one by one okay individual is the biggest of all individual will take maximum time it will consume a lot of time an individual individual will consume probably the first part of today's lecture before the break after the break also individual may consume some time and we will be doing questions also first chapter there will not be any question because it was like a general introduction from the second chapter onwards there will be a question they will say determine the residential status of the assessee so you will have to answer those questions but all the others huf company firm aop bio ajp they will all get over very fast together they will not take that much time which individual alone will take they are all very small so be patient and focus on what is happening we are learning residential status of the first assessee who is the first assessee for whom we are learning individual what is the classification for individuals resident and non resident can i say this is the first classification and once you are a resident then there is going to be further classification what is further classification of residents under individual resident and ordinarily resident and resident what not ordinarily resident correct so i am going to teach you residential status of individuals in two steps step number 1 how to classify individual into resident and non resident what are the rules of this acha listen before i go ahead while i am teaching you classification of resident and non resident we will have to go deep into the discussion of resident and non resident deep ha huh? all throughout do you know the reason why we are doing this classification you know why we are doing resident non resident why because of scope of total income resident will pay tax on world income and non resident on indian income that is the reason we are doing this classification that is the reason why we are doing this classification tell me are you following okay so step number 1 we will learn resident and non resident and step number 2 we will learn resident and ordinarily resident resident but not ordinarily resident that is ror or r nor so two steps and individual residential status will get over if you have a little common sense samanya bodham common sense if you have little common sense little just tell me yes or no matlab true or false step 2 will be done only and only if answer to step 1 is resident because under non resident there is no further classification non resident is non resident story over a non resident is not ordinary non resident or not ordinary non non resident is non resident topic is over that means that means see if you understand what i am saying if answer to step 1 is resident we perform step number 2 and decide ordinary or not ordinary but if answer to step 1 is non resident our sum is over our topic is finished khatam tata finish tirnu finish if answer to step 1 is non resident we don't go further the sum is over you understood what i said okay so tell me what will we learn first step number 1 what are we going to learn in this step number 
whether the assessee is resident or non resident we are going to learn whether the assessee is resident or non resident they have given two conditions section 6 ha i told you residential status means section 6 of income tax scope of income is given in section 5 two conditions so can i say there will be condition 1 and condition 2 one by one i will be telling you don't write anything focus don't write one and two because you cannot you don't know no how much space is required for one how much space is required for two so understand first what i am saying two conditions are given so i will write them one by one eyes open ears open nose not required if you satisfy please focus any one also out of the two conditions if you satisfy ladies and gentlemen any one of the two conditions then you will be treated as a resident that means that means if you satisfy condition 1 or condition 2 any one of them then what you will be considered or treated as a resident and your world income will be taxable in india world income global income because that is what rule applies for residents world income is going to be taxable in india supposingly you satisfy both conditions then what are you obviously resident you satisfy one but not two then still resident two but not one then still resident or then may i put it this way see if you have common sense little brain to understand therefore if i dissatisfy both condition 1 and condition 2 then what will i become that means satisfy any one of the two conditions and you become a resident and dissatisfy both conditions and you become a non resident are you following so shall we write the two conditions one by one first condition and look at how clever i am how intelligent i am between the first condition and the second condition i am using the word or means or see ek to confusion is confusion is if you use the word or in english it means any one and sometimes when we use the word or in hindi that means it means both very confusing good some of you all don't know hindi only best hai. so focus on the english language in english what does the word or mean any one and that's the rule no satisfy any one and you become a resident so i am writing between condition 1 and condition 2 i am writing the word or no problem let's see how will a person become resident in india if you have been physically present in india if you have been physically present in india for a period of focus 182 days or more you understand greater than and equal to yes sir so if you have been in india for 182 days can i say half of a year 365 ka half you do you'll get 182 is equal to 182 also covered this is very important this is very important because you will know 183 is covered you will know 181 is not covered but what about exact number 182 is equal to also covered i have written greater than and equal to both if you have been physically present in india for 182 days or more during the relevant previous 
year and this is why I again and again put importance on the previous year applicable for your exam. You have to check in that previous year the physical presence. Supposingly last year you were in India for the full year. But this year you were not in India for one day also. So you cannot apply that last year's number of days. You have to check for the relevant previous year. And which is why this is very important. I ask students again and again. If you are a student giving exam in May 22 or November 22. Then which is the applicable previous year for your exam? So your previous year will start on 1421 and end on 31st March 22. In this period you have stayed in India for a minimum. Can it be higher than 182? Yes. yes sir. Can it be equal to 182? Yes. Yes. Minimum 182 days if you have stayed in India, you just have to check the persons, the assessees, physical presence in India. Where were you? Where were you? Were you in India? Physically present in India for 50% of the year, 182 days, equal to or more than 182 days, then you will be treated as a resident. Finished. And once you are treated as a resident, what is the impact in income tax? Scope of total income, what is the impact? Your global income, your world income will be taxable in India. That means a person who has stayed in India for 185, 190, 200, 210, 230, 240, 360, 365 days, full year you were in India. What is your residential status? You already have the answer. What is your status? You are a resident. Resident. Okay. But supposingly you are less than 182 days in India. Say 181. That means can I say you are not satisfying condition 1? But you can still become resident. Tell me how? By satisfying condition 2. Because, because do we know that anyone you satisfy so you become a? resident so the one who satisfies condition one great if you dissatisfy condition one what is your second option if you have been once again physically present in india if you have been physically present in india that means what was your location physical presence in india for a period of 60 days or more during the previous year. 60 days or more during the previous year. Again tell me, which is the previous year applicable for your exam? That means can I say 60 days you will check during this period? 1, 4, 21 to 31st March 22. But then wait for those who are making faces. Say Aman was shocked when I wrote this. Sir, what are you doing? Sir, first you said 182. Now you are saying 60. If 60 will make me resident, then what is the relevance of 182? Because this 60 and this 182 is being checked in the same period. If it was a different period, then it would have still made sense. But you are checking in the same period 60, same period 182. If 60 will make me resident, then what is the importance of 182? Wait, this condition 2 is not over. Condition 2 is not finished. Wait. Along with that, now what is the importance of the word and in English? And means both. Both. And you also have to be physically present in India. For 365 days or more. But the first be clear. In the 182 condition. Is equal to 182 also covered? Yes. yes. In the 60 condition is equal to covered? Yes. And in the 365 condition also equal to is covered. 365 days or more. During. Now listen. I am going to speak a little. English. 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 Listen. 
they say in in legal language if i have to talk to you in legal language i know you are kids you all are kids you all are immature you all are not your fault you all are young no in the coming time in your upcoming life you are going to learn a lot of laws you are going to learn lot of technical language if i talk to ca final students i talk in a different language when i am talking to ca inter students i know i have to change the way i talk so if i talk about the legal language they say 365 days or more during four immediately preceding previous years english four immediately preceding previous years chal shall i come to intermediate level some are saying no sir we understood this also no no problem let me go let me give you the easy part also during the last four years last four years and once again comes the importance of your exam previous year if your exam previous year is 21 22 that means 182 you were checking in 21 22 sixty you were checking in 21 22 but 365 you don't check in 21 22 you have to check the four years before that do one thing go in reverse order in reverse order it will be easy before 21 22 which are the last four years go in reverse order you have please participate 2021 20, very good 1920 1819 1920 1920 17 eighteen eighteen nineteen nineteen twenty 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 one that means can I say the period from one four seventeen to thirty first march twenty one the four year period from seventeen means seventeen eighteen onwards one four seventeen ending on thirty first march twenty two your stay in India during this period should have been minimum 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 three hundred and 65 days that means if current year you are satisfying 182 condition can i say you don't have to check anything else you don't have to check last year or 3 years before that or anything if current year it is 182 topic over you are a resident but if current year it is less than 182 so next option is current year minimum 60 current year minimum 60 but along with that you have to also fulfill one more condition it is it is a word and used over here what is that second condition that you have to fulfill along, along with 60 of the current year 365 in the last 4 years see if you understand diagrammatically like this supposingly this is your 2122 21, and these are your last 4 years so say 2021 20, 19 20 18 19 17 18 if in this period you do 182 then you don't have to check anything you are a resident no need to check anything the story is over but if in this period it is not 182 it is only 60 then you have to check these four years total and that has to be how much minimum 365 So, how does residential status get determined in our country for individual? We are still at the first SSE. Focus, huh? We are at the first SSE. Like we have started individual. Same thing we will do for HUF company when we go ahead. Right now we are in individual step one. Step one, we are deciding whether you are resident or non-resident. How many conditions are listed for residential status of individual? How many conditions? Two conditions. and you have to satisfy how many out of the two to become a resident any one condition 1 or condition 2 in condition 1 there is only one rule 182 days of the current year but in condition 2 there are two rules current year stay has to be 60 along with that last four years has to be 365 365 have you understood if you satisfy any one of the conditions then you will become a resident so how will one become a non resident only if you dissatisfy both dissatisfy 
both and obviously if you are resident then we go and learn step number 2 resident and ordinarily resident resident but not ordinarily resident also if you are a resident you have to pay tax on your global income but if you are a non resident you have to pay tax only on your indian income but with respect to the conditions that i have made you write here now i need to teach you some points to be noted there are some doubts in your mind in my mind let there be no doubt let there be no doubt let this be absolutely clear absolutely clear okay one by one point by point i will make you understand one by one okay and only after these points are over you can say that we are done with step number 1 residential status and in then we have to go and learn step number 2 ordinary and not ordinary hello okay what are the points firstly see if you have understood it is only a discussion on what we have already finished if greater than or equal to 182 then you are a resident and you know you don't need to check anything else you are a resident no need to check anything else when i say no need to check anything else matlab last 4 years we don't have to check correct yes sir very good do you also realize this this was easy do you also realize if your stay in india during 21 22 your exam previous year during 21 22 is less than 60 days liana you are in dubai since which date if you don't mind me asking um, you have not visited india and i don't see that you plan to visit to india at any time before 31st of march in short can i say during 21 22 your stay in india is 0 days yes less than 60 can i conclude that you are a non resident once again no need to check last 4 years ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen what i am trying to make you understand is that we will check last 4 years only and only and only if your stay in india is greater than or equal to 60 and less than 182 only if it is between 60 and 181 we check last 4 years if it is 182 no need to check you have become a resident if it is 59 or less no need to check you have become a non resident last 4 years will be checked only if 60 to 181 60 to 181 then you check last 4 years otherwise no need to check your answer is clear your answer is clear no need to check are you understood so when will we check last 4 years only if stay during the previous year was 60 to 181 very good i have continuously while teaching also made you observe it but as a point to be noted as a conclusion i am making you write this see if you understand equal to 182 60 and 365 is allowed it does not have to be greater than 182 or greater than 60 or greater than 365 can i say everywhere we have written greater than equal to greater than equal to greater than equal to means if it is exact 182 is condition 1 satisfied yes if it is exact 60 exact 365 is condition 2 satisfied yes so that is what i have written equal to is also allowed it need not be greater than is that understood very good next it need not be very important to note it need not be continuous सर क्या सर व्हाट एंड द सर क्या सर अरे इजी है पेशेंस है पेशेंस यू हैव पेशेंस लिसन ओके आई विल टेक 
Liana, you don't mind, no, I take your example again and again. Okay. Supposingly, she came to India from Dubai for 60 days. 60 days. She left. She came in April. She stayed till the end of May. So, 60 days she stayed in India. She left in the first week of June. 1st July, she comes back. July and August, she is here for another 62 days. September 10th, she again leaves. 1st October, she again comes. October, November, she is again here. Like this, is she making total of 182 by staying some days, some days, some days? It is not necessary that it has to be continuous 182, continuous 60 or continuous 365 during last 4 years. It can be achieved in parts also. 10 days come, go for 1 day. 10 days come, go for 1 day. 15 days come, go for 3 days. 1 month come, go for 10 days. All the days that you have stayed in India will be counted as your 182, 63, 65 requirement. Have you understood the meaning of the point number 3 that I have written here? The stay that we have written 182, 63, 65 need not be continuous. It can be in small parts also. Is that understood? Very good. Purpose or place in India is irrelevant. When we are determining residential status of any individual assessee, focus on what I have written. Conditions are over here, ladies and gentlemen. Conditions are over. I am just doing general discussion about the conditions with you. This is my explanation about the condition. Focus. What did I tell you? How does one become resident? Physical presence, physical presence. Whether 182 or 6365. Physical presence in India is what I have told you. Whether the purpose of your visit to India has been for earning whether it is only to visit your relatives, whether it is only for a pilgrimage, irrelevant, irrelevant. Why you have come to India is irrelevant. If you are in India, those days will be counted for residential status. The purpose is irrelevant. Is that part understood? Purpose of visit in India is irrelevant. If you are physically present in India, it will be counted as your stay in India. Place. Listen. Listen. You come to India. You stay in Kochi or you stay in Kasargod or you stay in Kannur or you come to Mumbai or Ahmedabad or Delhi or West Bengal or you Madhya Pradesh or, uh, or uh, you go to Himachal Pradesh or Delhi or Punjab or Haryana or Goa. Are all of these places in India? So, within India where you have stayed is irrelevant. It is not necessary. Suno, 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 suno. What I mean to say. I know you are very clever to understand this, but I am clarifying. It is not necessary that you have to stay 182 days at one place, Kerala. Or 182 days at one place in Mumbai. Okay. So, supposingly, I go abroad. I come and stay in Mumbai for 65 days. Then I go again for 15-20 days. I come and stay in Delhi for another 65 days. First of all, if I am not staying continuously, will all of these days still be counted? Yes. So, second time I stayed in Delhi. Then I went for 20 days. I came back and I stayed at my in-law's house, Kolkata, for 65 days. 65, 65, 65. Three different places in India, but they will still be counted. Has the total become 195? I have become a resident in India. Which place in India you are living is irrelevant. Which purpose you are living irrelevant. Whether you eat food or you don't eat food. Whether you stay in a house or a temple or a mosque or a footpath without any fear of Bollywood superstars coming and killing you on the footpath. Where you are living irrelevant. The only thing that matters in deciding residential status under income tax is, please tell me now, what? Stay in India. Your stay in India. Stay in India is also right only. 
physical presence that is your stay in India. That is the only thing that is relevant. Only thing that is relevant. Have you understood this? Next. Again, a very, very important point. That way, in my explanation, it is already covered. What is the only thing that is relevant? Physical presence in India. Stay in India. So, I don't need to give this clarification to you. But I don't want to take any risk or chance. And thus focus. Citizenship or nationality is also totally irrelevant. Which country's citizen you are, which country's passport you hold, totally irrelevant. Residential status strictly depends upon physical presence in India. Nothing, nothing, I repeat nothing, mind you, nothing matters other than physical presence. Citizenship and nationality is also irrelevant. <laughs> to give you examples, actual examples. You all have heard of a cricketer called Hardik Pandya. You know he is married to a foreign citizen. His wife is a foreigner. She is not Indian. Do you know that? But now she has settled with him in India. So where does she live? In India. Assume that full year she was in India. Means 182 condition is satisfied. If 182 is satisfied then we don't need to check anything else. Last 4 years etc. Nothing will matter now. Correct or no? But she is a foreign national, no foreign citizen. Irrelevant. For tax purposes, if she is physically present in India, she will be treated as a resident for the purpose of income tax. Have you understood this? Another example. You have heard of a Bollywood actress called Priyanka Chopra? Yes. You know she got married to that baby boy who looks like her younger brother. You know or you don't know? What, what is the name of that guy? Jonas. Nick, Nick Jonas. <laughs> Supposingly he decides to settle with Priyanka Chopra in India. He is a foreign citizen. But he decides to stay in India. Once you fulfill the condition of physical presence in India. For 182 in the current year or 60 in the current year and 365 in the last 4 years. Then you will be treated as a... Resident. resident for tax purposes you are a resident irrespective of your nationality a very important point to note very important point to note that citizenship or nationality is a totally irrelevant when it comes to deciding residential status for tax purposes is this clear next point to be noted next point to be noted do you know there are some people who are frequent travelers again and again? You know, 1st April they go out of Mumbai, 10th April they come back, 12th they go, 20th they come back, uh, then they stay for one month, then they again go, they come back. Continuous travelers? Yes, sir. So we are giving you an option. If you are able to maintain data of incoming and outgoing time at what time you left India and at what time you entered India in that case 24 hours will be treated as one day physical presence I'll explain I'll explain I'll explain don't worry don't worry don't worry. Example. Example. 1st April. Midnight. You enter India. Twelve o'clock means 31st night. Twelve o'clock. Can I say 1st April has started? Yes. You come to India. Okay. And. 
से टू पी एम यू लीव इंडिया यू हैव यू हैव द सेम डे डिपार्चर सो नाइट यू केम एंड आफ्टरनून सेम डे हा नाइट यू केम एंड आफ्टरनून यू आर लिविंग वॉट इज योर टाइम ऑफ लिविंग द कंट्री टू तो डू यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस मेक्स इट आई थिंक फोर्टीन आवर्स ऑफ स्टे इन इंडिया फ्रॉम मिड नाइट टू टू ओ क्लॉक मेक सेंस नाउ यू हैव लेफ्ट इंडिया ओके नाउ यू लेफ्ट इंडिया ऑन फिफ्थ अप्रिल यू कम बैक टू इंडिया से यू कम एट मिड नाइट अगेन and morning 10 am you again leave india so how many hours you have stayed in india this time 10 hours total is and therefore you have stayed in india for one day now see what i have written if data of incoming and outgoing time can be maintained then 24 hours of stay in india will be treated as one day physical presence but do you think this is possible see on paper they can write whatever they want in the income tax act let them write whatever they want you think it is possible exactly my flight entered india at what time so all throughout the flight you are not doing anything but checking the time india 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 land india 10:50 am 10:50 no right now so write down on your notepad 10:50 i enter same thing at the time of departure departure is it possible to maintain the data of timing absolutely not possible absolutely not possible so income tax people are very smart and very clever you know what they are doing if it is not possible and we all know it is not possible to maintain data like this this is crazy stuff not possible your incoming day that means the day in which you the day on which you enter india and your outgoing day both will be included in your physical presence incoming and outgoing both days will be counted let's take this example only as per timing data can i say it came to 24 hours that means one day in india but as per this rule do you understand first april is your entry day as well as outgoing day that will be counted in india fifth april will also be counted and that means going by this rule it will be counted as two days in india and if you don't want all this see this is something that you can actually cancel let me speak one line one line the day on which you enter india and the day on which you leave india both will be counted as your physical presence in india so supposingly you leave on 1st july so 1st july will be counted as stay in india this is very important because there will be a question determine residential status so they will say assessee leaves india on 1st july that means april he was in india you will count 30 days may he was in india you will count 31 days june he was in india you will count 30 days plus one day of july because the day he left will also be included supposingly 10th july he comes back so obviously 11th july onwards he is in india but that 10th july also it will be counted as stay in india the incoming day and outgoing day the incoming day and outgoing day both will be counted and that is possible to be determined huh? because when you are leaving the country or you are entering the country the immigration department people put a stamp of date those who have traveled abroad will be aware of this those who have not traveled abroad i am telling you this that in your passport they put a stamp date of entry in india date of leaving india so which date you enter india and which date you leave india it is very easy to determine using your passport are we clear immigration stamp will tell us incoming day as well as yes please come again please be a little loud and keep your mic near your mouth stamp no stamp ke upar jo date that stamp that they put in the passport incoming time and outgoing they change it immediately at 12 o'clock so if you enter at 
12 15 they will put the new date so if you have entered at the immigration counter after that date then the new date ka stamp will be put on your passport understood which is why a lot of people prefer midnight flights because the day changes so that one day they can save we at our level see we are such poor people that we have never left mumbai also in the last two years leaving the country is out of question so at our level that planning does not happen but at the big level the rich industrialist they want to become non-resident if you have understood what i am teaching since i have started the chapter do you realize why any assessee will prefer to be non-resident because if you are resident then world income becomes taxable but if you are non-resident then only indian income outside india wala not taxable so they purposely want to be non-resident and they purposely plan their stay in such a way that they stay for less than 182 less than 60 less than 365 and to manage that because they know incoming date and outgoing date will be counted they purposely take the midnight flight so that one day is also removed from their entry and exit date and the immigration counter changes the stamp at 12 o'clock you have seen those rubber stamps where date changing is possible uh, that uh, revolving kind of rubber stamp in which you can change the date you know that no those stamps are put on the passport at the time of immigration okay so is this point clear so that 24 hours wala point if you want you can ignore focus on incoming and outgoing days is this clear and finally in the points to be noted that i am doing point number seven all throughout all throughout if you observe carefully where do you have to be physically present for counting of 182 60 and 365 which place you have to be present india 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 if you are in india 182 in india 60 in india 365 in india only physical continuously we are saying only physical presence only physical presence citizenship irrelevant nationality irrelevant continuous stay irrelevant which city of india irrelevant purpose of india irrelevant what is the only thing matters stay in india stay in india stay in india what is india what is india ladies and gentlemen i have some news for you our income tax law has defined india definition of india for income tax purposes i am not joking this is a definition given in section 2 definition of india that means you have to be present in this india not the india that you know you have to be present in this india 182 will be counted in this india 60 will be counted in this india 365 days will be counted in this india which india mitro the land mass land mass means the indian land from kashmir to kanyakumari from gujarat to arunachal pradesh can i say that is the land of india so any corner of the country if you are present will that be counted as stay in india and i have already told you that which place or which city in india is irrelevant any corner of india will be covered wait ladies and gentlemen this is not over the territorial waters of india twi we call it in short territorial waters of india that is 12 nautical miles in sea is also india ladies and gentlemen is also india first of all sir what is nautical miles you know distance on road is measured in kilometers mumbai to ahmedabad 535 kilometers and mumbai to rajasthan 700 800 kilometers mumbai to goa again about 600 kilometers distance on land is measured in kilometer that's a unit of measurement just like height you measure in feet simple distance in water water 
is measured. This is a unit of measurement, nautical miles. How to measure distance on water bodies, nautical miles. So, what is the territorial waters of India? Pay attention. Supposingly, I was very bad in in drawing in in school, huh? so please don't mind. Please don't mind. Okay. If this is this does not amount to disrespect, I don't have that talent. Unfortunately, my explanation is my talent. My drawing is not my talent. My handwriting is also not my talent. Many people suggest me that you should have become a doctor because your handwriting only a chemist can understand. I I know my limitations. I know my but at the same time I know my strengths also. Assume this is India. You know this is Gujarat, by the way. If to make it clear that this is this is Kashmir, this is south you some students of the class are currently located over here that is your city of uh, i mean state of kerala some students are currently from here that is maharashtra so it's a indian map that i have made in front of you first of all do you understand this is the landmass in this landmass you are present in any corner it will be considered as stay in india but then beyond this do you know what do you have over here what do you have over here what is this portion Adjoining the landmass, do you know that we have the Arabian Sea over here? Do you know we have the Bay of Bengal over here? Have you studied this much geography in school? Read this is this is the Arabian Sea. This is the Bay of Bengal. Somewhere over here we have a small island nation called Sri Lanka. The place between India and Sri Lanka is called the Park Strait, and there is a bridge called the Rama Setu. No. You have not studied history, geography, anything in school, no? It's okay. At least you all know about Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal. Yes, the distance in water is measured. What is the unit of measurement? Nautical. nautical miles. Up to 12 nautical miles is going to be treated India. This is called Indian waters. Okay? There are some people who give motivational talks that... The borders can be made only on land. There is no border on water. Rubbish, nonsense. There is border in water also. 12 nautical miles means Indian water. So, if you are present at any place in the land or if you are present in the water over here up to a distance of 12 nautical miles, that will also be considered as your stay in India because the definition of India also includes the territorial waters. This is known as the Indian water. India Kapani. Indian waters that will also be treated as stay in India, the territorial waters of India. That means, can I say you spend 182 or 60 or 365 on the land or in water, in water up to a distance of 12 nautical miles. India is not over. <laughs> Hello. India is not over. Have you understood the 12 nautical miles means the second point over here? So, first point is land mass, second point is 12 nautical miles. I am removing Sri Lanka for, for the time being from the map because Sri Lanka is irrelevant right now. Third, the seabed and subsoil of the TWI. What is TWI? Territorial waters. Ladies and gentlemen, the vessels which move on water, that means ships, boats, they are of two types. One, which are always on surface. Surface means floating on the water at the top. Is it possible that you are present in that boat, in that ship? It is counted as stay in India as per the point number two. Let me do the numbering here. As per point number two. But is it possible that you are not in a ship or a boat, you are in a submarine? Inside the water, water has got depth, no? So, in the 12 nautical miles distance, you are inside the water body, not at the surface. There is a Bollywood movie, Ghazi Attack. Has anyone seen that movie? If, if by chance you have, because Indian audience is the worst audience in the world. Worst audience in the world. Indian audience watches Movies like Dhoom 3 and Prem Ratan Dhan Payo, which is why good movies are 
not made and most good movies of bollywood are actually copied from south movies south movies are actually far better than drishyam was a south movie drishyam 2 is already made in south and very soon they are going to take the rights and ajay devgan will make drishyam 2 very soon bahubali the best movie i think ever made was actually a telugu movie it was later only dubbed these days a movie called pushpa is running in the theaters one of the best movies ever made but pushpa again is a telugu movie it is only dubbed in hindi and uh, hindi marathi actor shreyas talpade has actually done the dubbing for pushpa movie so indian audience honestly speaking worst audience in the world gazi attack is a movie on submarine submarine war between india and pakistan so that submarine you know is inside the water body but within the distance of 12 nautical miles so that will also be counted as ladies and gentlemen stay in india the definition of india also includes the seabed and the subsoil of the territorial water means you can be on the surface or inside the water but within the distance of 12 nautical miles it will be treated as stay in india and last point you are saying sir even now something is left yes yes one more piece of news i would like to give you okay the air space the air space above what above the land mass and the territorial waters of india is also india means listen means listen you are all on land if you look up to the sky that sky that you look up to is also indian sky just to give you a small piece of information somewhere over here next to india there is pakistan somewhere over here to the right is china any flight from pakistan to china there is a direct shortcut if you take this route but india has the right to prohibit this and thus if pakistan flight has to go to china it has to go to this route through this route or this route somewhere over here will be afghanistan if india wants to maintain cordial relations with afghanistan direct flights pakistan can prohibit you cannot take your flights from my air you have to change your route and go like this the air above you also belongs to the government so if you have earned income on the ground that is called income earned in india and if you have earned income in the air that is also called income earned in india the air the air above what the air above this land and the air above the territorial waters of india that is also called india for example rithik roshan did a movie called krish he used to fly he has got you know we are excited about spider man but we don't like indian superheroes spider man can show any kind of graphics and vfx and we like it wow nicely shot and india may if the same thing is made we do not appreciate it so indian superhero rithik roshan krish had these powers for those who don't have uh, have not seen the movie he can fly from one he can jump from one building to other he used to he used to mostly be in the air only if i get those powers no i will make people sit 5 rupees ahmedabad 10 rupees surat 15 rupees rajasthan 20 rupees i i'll fly and I, i'll make people sit and take charges from them that means can i say i am in the air and i am in i am earning income in the air do you understand what i am saying yes that is also treated as stay in india the air space above the land mass and the territorial waters is also in india in short listen if you are on the land of india will that be counted in your physical presence if you are on the surface of the territorial waters of india territorial waters up to 12 nautical miles will that be counted inside when you are submerged that is called a seabed and what is subsoil subsoil means when you touch right up to the bottom of the seabed 
the exact bottom the exact ground that is subsoil mean basically you are inside the territorial waters on the surface or inside that is also in india is the meaning understood seabed and subsoil and if you are in the air space above the land mass and the seabed or the territorial waters of india that will also be considered as your stay in india this ladies and gentlemen is the definition of india for the purpose of indian tax this is the definition of india for the purpose of indian tax law you have to be physically present for 182 days 60 days 365 days where for residential status here where do you have to be present for 182 60 or 365 year 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 ladies and gentlemen year understood everyone okay residential status of individual as i told you is very very big the other parts are small they won't take that much time but we are still an individual in individual you know there are two steps of residential status what are the two steps first step is resident non-resident and second step is ror rnor even the first step is not over even the first step is not over in the first step what have i taught you till now we started step number one resident or non-resident by writing two conditions how many you satisfied to become resident anyone how many you dissatisfied to become non-resident both correct what is the first condition 182 days in india during your exam previous year exam previous year is 21 22 option 2 in this year it is only 60 but along with this last four years total 365 and the other points one by one we studied all the points equal to is also covered also when do we have to check last four years only if it is between 60 and 181 if it is less than 60 you are a non-resident story is over if it is 182 or more you are a resident story is over all other points need not be continuous place or purpose citizenship irrelevant meaning of india incoming outgoing days both will be counted all this is clear now now that way our first two conditions that is 182 and 6365 are over but now there is extra information about this there are two cases in income tax where condition 2 is not applicable only two cases in income tax where condition 2 is not applicable come here how many conditions do you see for determination of residential status two people like you people like me how many conditions two two satisfy anyone satisfy anyone satisfy anyone but there are two assesses in income tax for whom pay attention you don't cancel this huh you don't cancel this pay attention this condition condition two is not applicable it is not applicable only for these two assesses there is only one way of becoming resident only one way of becoming resident and that only way of becoming resident is in india for a period of 182 days during the previous year 6365 condition is not applicable 6365 condition is not applicable only 182 is applicable you don't cancel huh? because i use technology if i cancel i can remove this like this condition 2 is applicable in income tax it is just not applicable for two assesses that means do you understand that with respect to these two assesses see if you understand see if you understand that these two assesses can therefore become resident only and only and only if they satisfy come on tell me what if condition 2 is not applicable that means you can become resident only by satisfying very good but what would you like to become today i am giving you an option today i am giving you an option what will you like to become given a choice given a choice if option is with you 
to become resident or non resident then what will you like to what will you be what will you find happiness in being a resident or being a non resident non resident for that person very smart answer very clever answer see i should say this is my efficiency maybe and the reason why everyone unanimously said non resident for tax purposes is because if you are resident then you have to pay tax on global income but if you are non resident then you will have to pay tax only on income earned in india so better to be non resident always better to be non resident yes but this is one thing which students come in ca final no in ca final because international tax is relevant so i do this residential status again but not in so much detail like i am doing i don't make students write all these points that i have written with you here i don't do in so much detail because the portion of intermediate which is repeated in ca final first of all i am the only faculty in the country which teaches these topics again residential status uh, the heads of income house property business profession capital gain even the chapters like clubbing set of deductions i teach rest of india students are taught only the second part the new income tax which was not there in intermediate i teach but not by taking you know 120 hours i have to give you and if the same 120 hours i start taking in ca final already they have a good amount of about uh, 1 uh, 150 or 160 hours so whatever i teach you for 120 hours here i finish that in about 40 50 hours with ca final students so i do residential status but not in that much detail i ask those students what will you like to become they say resident because their base is not clear basics are very poor they say resident then i say keep your patriotism under control for the time being because over here patriotism is not required over here common sense is required being resident will make you liable for taxation on world income so what is better to become always in income tax non resident then tell me please if this assessee who falls in this exception can i say these are exceptions where condition 2 is not applicable normal people both condition but these people only condition 1 then if this person wants to become a non resident then how will this person become a non resident come on if you dissatisfy only dissatisfy come on only dissatisfy which one first one because second condition is not applicable only because second condition is not applicable only have we understood this all of us now what are the two cases for whom first condition is applicable second condition is not applicable only be clear means normal people you are going to check 182 6365 182 6365 182 but for these people you will check only what 365 only 365 because only 182 my bad only 182 because 6365 is not applicable let's see who are those two people first first person who falls in the exception if you are a citizen of india who are you citizen of india there are various ways in which you can become citizen of india and this is not taxation ladies and gentlemen this is not taxation this is school civics this is general knowledge how do you become citizen if you are born in india you become citizen if your parents are born even if your birth has taken place outside india if any one of your parents are born in india you can become indian citizen you get married to an indian citizen and permanently settle down in india you can become indian citizen government of india can offer honorary citizenship to anyone recently a very very controversial law citizenship amendment act you have any idea of what the citizenship amendment act is no what is it i'll tell you i'll tell you i, I am not uh, pro government or anti government this is just information that i am 
giving you that India has got neighboring countries in the form of Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, which are all Islamic nations. At the time of partition, India's partition was a religion based partition in 1947, which most of us are aware of. So at the time of partition, there were some, you know, people belonging to Hindu community, Jain community, Sikh community who were staying in Lahore, Karachi, etc. And they decided to stay there. So the dark day in Indian history where Indians, everyone was Indian, suddenly got divided into Indians and Pakistanis. And then it was a religion based partition. So our Modi government is saying that I don't know. This is 1947. I was not there in 1947. So I will not say this is right or wrong. Disclaimer I am giving you in advance. This is not in support or against anything, anyone. Any country, any community, anything. Modi government says that the then Prime Minister, Mr. Nehru, promised these people in Pakistan, the minority communities of Pakistan. Pakistan was created on the basis of religion. So the minority communities in Pakistan, we promised them that if you don't get a good life over there, you can come to India whenever you want, we will allow you. If you are a minority community in any of the neighboring countries, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, if you are a minority community, means if you are a Hindu, Sikh, Jain, Buddhist over there and you don't get a good life, you are not treated properly in that country, you can come to India whenever you want. Was a promise made by Mr. Nehru is what Mr. Modi says. I don't know whether this is true or false. So what is the Citizenship Amendment Act? What is the Citizenship Amendment Act? That if any one of these people wants to come to settle in India, we will give you citizenship. Now, what is the politics behind it, whether it is right or no, whether Nehruji actually made the promise. I was not there when Nehruji was there. So, I don't know about it. Are you understanding? But then, if that act gets enacted, the Citizenship Amendment Act, then there will be one more way of becoming Indian citizen. There are multiple ways in which presently all you are required to understand is the person has to be citizen of India and there are various ways and this was taught in school. How does one become citizen of India? By birth, by parents birth, by marrying an Indian citizen and permanent settlement in India, honorary citizenship given by government to any respected person or citizenship amendment act. These are the various ways. So who are you? A citizen of India. Where do you stay? You stay in India. Where do you stay? Where do you earn? In India. Where do you live? In India. Where is your family? Where is your upbringing? Everything. Where is it? In India. But you are going outside India. But you are what? Going outside India. For what purpose? For the purpose of earning money. What is the reason for you to go outside India? For earning money. For the purpose of taking up a job and employment in India. Who was the other UAE student other than Liana? Who was the other student from UAE attending live? There was one more student. No? Devika. Devika, no? Devika, do you mind me asking why did you shift to UAE? What purpose? You left India? What reason? For employment. So this is something that is directly applicable to you. For employment purposes. That means you have gone outside India to make money. Please pay attention. To summarize, why have you gone outside India? To make money. Or you have left India as a crew member of an Indian ship. I hope you know this much that whenever an Indian ship will go outside, there is going to be a captain of the ship. Like you have a pilot in a, in, in a flight, you have a pilot, you have a captain and there are crew members. You have left India as a crew member. Means can I say, in short, you are on duty. You are 
earning outside India, you are on duty outside India, you are on duty outside India. What is common in all of these people? See, rule is 6365 not applicable, 182 is applicable. But what is the difference between us and the rest of the students of the country? We will know the reason, the logic behind this. Remember, nothing is bigger than logic. If you know the reason behind a provision, then understanding the law will become very easy for you. Understand what's the beauty of these people. They are all leaving our country, going outside. But what is the purpose of going outside? Earning money. And we are assuming that they will earn that money and bring that money to India. That means, can I say in a nutshell, these are people who are going to bring foreign money to India. They will earn outside India and they will bring that foreign money to India. Repatriate, we call it. Bring that money to India. We want to appreciate such people. This is good no, for Indian economy. Foreign money is coming in India. You go outside, earn in a foreign country, bring that money in India. Good no? Now see, this person comes to India. Achha, by the way, see Devika, for example, is earning in Dubai. That means, can I say that is her foreign income? She comes to India, spends a few days, 15, 20 days, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 56. Now she wants to leave India. She is hurry. She is in a hurry. Say, I want to go. I want to go. Because if I touch 60, then as per Indian tax law, 60 and last four years, 365, I become a resident and my global income starts getting taxed. So the income that I earn in Dubai, also India will start taking tax on my Dubai income. If I am a resident, the world income will get taxed. So she wants to leave our country after 55 days because she does not want to touch 60. But Indian government is saying, relax, madam. Don't worry. We will not make you resident after 60 days. We will not make you resident after 60 days. We will make that condition only inapplicable to you. We will make that what? Condition only inapplicable to you. The condition of 60 is not applicable. That means can I say Devika can stay in India for some more time and still she will not become resident? And thus her Dubai income will not be taxable in India? She will become resident only after she touches 182 days. Is that understood? The idea that people who are earning outside India have come to India. That means they are going to spend that foreign income in India. So we want you to stay for a little longer duration. And thus we will not apply the 6365 condition. The condition that will be applicable will be only 182. 82 days and therefore ladies and gentlemen normal circumstances two conditions to become resident satisfy anyone and you become a resident what are the two conditions to become resident 182 in the current year 182 or or anyone so 60 in the current year and 365 last four years but for people who have gone out for employment, earning or as a crew member of Indian ship, only 182 will apply, 6365 will not apply. Is that understood? Very good. With respect to this crew member, some years ago, there was a circular released by CBDT. Circulars are released by CBDT, I told you that towards the end of yesterday's class. Circular released by CBDT. That way, circulars are not relevant for your portion. But wherever they come in exam, I am going to discuss circulars also with you. CBDT said that for a crew member, the period of continuous discharge certificate, for whom this point is applicable only for the crew member of Indian ship, the period of continuous Discharge certificate. The period of continuous discharge certificate. CDC we call it. Continuous discharge certificate means CDC. The period of continuous discharge certificate CDC shall be excluded from stay in India. It will not be counted as your stay in India. 
the period of CDC shall be excluded from your stay in India. What's your question? Sir, please explain. Meaning of? If I explain to you meaning of CDC, will you understand that the number of days in CDC will not be included as your stay in India? Let me explain what this is. Normally, people who do a job you know you get one holiday in a week weekly of sunday holiday normally that is the system so if i am taking lectures in mumbai i work monday to saturday sunday i have to give my family also and as i told you a uh, social work uh, is a hobby is a passion for me so uh, i have to give that at least one week a uh, one day per week for that so we do get holidays no once in a week in any job, any business, Sunday closed. But when I am doing my outstation assignment, so when I am going for lectures in Ahmedabad or uh, Guntur in Andhra Pradesh or Kochi in Kerala, outside Mumbai, I visit the, these three places as of now. Soon I will be starting Chennai or Bangalore, any one of them. Only I have only that much time that I can take up one of the two cities, both not possible because in Mumbai itself, I have got three locations. Plus outside Mumbai, I already have three locations. So I have got huge workload. So one city only for South students because South students, I have observed that they are in a big problem when it comes to learning for CA. The problem is that the people who are experts in the subject, whether costing, FM, tax, audit, law, anything, most are North Indian faculties who cannot talk in English at all. They struggle to talk in English. Out of question that they can talk in Tamil or Telugu or Malayalam. Out of question. And at the local level, if somebody can talk in the local language, this is stupidity yeah? that you prefer someone only because the person knows Malayalam and does not know the subject. But knows the local language but does not know the subject at all. So it's a big, big compromise that you have to choose that what the person does not know the subject or does not know the language. And language becomes a barrier because I have got command over English I know that I can do it good for the South Indian students so Chennai or Bangalore is my target I don't plan to go anywhere north or east I am sure about it okay so whenever I go to these outstation assignments I work on Sundays also common sense if it's a 15 day batch there are going to be two Sundays minimum if I don't work if I take a holiday unnecessarily on an outstation tour that means I will have to stay for 17 days the hotel stay, food expenses, everything is paid by the class. It is a clear contract that all expenses of the faculty are paid by the organization. Then only we take up outstation assignments. But that's not the point here. I have to stay away from my, from my family for two more days. Now. And till the time I was just married, it was good to stay away from home. So I have to do less work. At home, I am made to do more work. But after becoming a father last three years, I hate to stay away from home. Coincidentally, last two years, majorly, I have stayed at home only. But after becoming a father, it's a different feeling altogether. I don't like to stay outside. So, I work on Sundays also. So, one thing is for sure. If you are doing outstation assignments for a temporary period, you will prefer not to have holidays. So, that the assignment gets over fast. Something similar applies to the shipping industry. Supposingly, I am having a tourist ship, a shipping company. So, I take... Customers on a, something like your Titanic or something like that. You take people from one island to the other on a picnic to other countries. So you will be having crew members on the ship. We will do a contract with them that when the ship is on the journey, you will not get any holiday. Now you imagine the ship leaves on Monday. It's a one month tour. Foreign tours can be of one month. On Saturday, the employee is saying, I am missing my mom. Please drop me home. Then bring back the ship. Or arrange for a private flight. I want to go home. 
I miss my mama. Give me a weekly off. No, dear employee, when you are in the journey, during that period, we will not give you any holiday. That is called continuous discharge certificate. A contract between the shipping company. Can I say that is the employer? Boss? And the crew member, that is the employee. A contract between the shipping company and the crew member, that means the employer and employee, that these many days you will have to work without any holiday. What is that contract called? Continuous discharge certificate. Is that understood? Now what happens sometimes is, to be on a safer side, let me explain the practical issue here. Our journey is planned for one month. That means we plan that 1st April our ship will leave and 30th April our ship will come back. That is our plan. So we will do CDC of one month. Dear employee, no holiday from 1st April to 30th April because you will be on the journey in the ship. Are you understanding what I am saying? No holiday. But because of some problem in the waters, sometimes the waters are not cooperative. There is some hurricane in the sea. The flow of the water is so fast that there is risk of drowning. Can I say we will have to stop our journey? Maybe till the time the waters are calm. And you cannot play with nature. If the waters are not cooperative, you have to. If supposingly, if there, you know, clouds or rains or fog, then flights also get delayed, no? Flights get delayed, no? Same thing can happen. On the water also, water journey also. So, five days delay took place. That means, can I say, instead of returning on 30th April, the ship will return on 5th May? If there is a delay. So, what was our plan? Ship will go on 1st April. It will return on 30th April. But sometimes there may be delay due to circumstances beyond our control. So, when we do the contract, listen, my dear employee, supposingly I am the shipping company employer and you are the crew member employee. Hi, employee. Say hi, employer. Hi, employee. Listen, we are going on a journey from 1st April to 30th April. From 1st April to 30th April. That is our plan. But for emergency purposes, our CDC will be till 10th May. For emergency purposes, by chance there is some delay. On 30th April, don't start asking for a private helicopter to go home. The CDC will be till 10th May. Plan is to return on 30th April, but there can be little delay. So the contract will be done for 10 days extra. Did you understand the idea by, behind doing extra number of days in the contract? Now listen, 1st April, the ship leaves India. This is the con contract is over. You all understood that plan is of 30 days and extra provision of 10 days. So, total contract is from 1st April till 10th May. Have you understood the meaning? Now, pay attention. 1st April, the journey starts. That means, can I say the employees have left the country? Till 30th April, they are outside the country. That means, can I say that period will not be counted in India? Can I say that period will not be counted in India? Yes. And the ship returns on 1st May. Ship returns. That means, can I say, from 1st May to 10th May, the employees have come back? Yes. But is the CDC period still going on? Yes. Then those days will not be counted as stay in India. In other words, if I have to keep it very simple for you as intermediate student, the conclusion is that start date of CDC, can I say that is the start date from which you have to start providing services, start date of contract? In our example, 1st April to end date of CDC, that in our example is 10th May will be excluded, that is not included in your physical presence. Even if the ship returns on 1st May, ladies and gentlemen, ship returns on 1st May. 
सो फर्स्ट टू टेंथ में वेर इज द एम्प्लॉय फिजिकली प्रेजेंट इंडिया बट इट विल स्टिल नॉट बी काउंटेड एज स्टे इन इंडिया दिस रूल इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर क्रू मेंबर्स ऑफ इंडियन शिप दिस रूल इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर द क्रू मेंबर्स हैव यू अंडरस्टूड एवरी वन फैंटास्टिक so so in all this chaos do you still remember residential status and scope of total income assessi will be divided into resident and non resident resident will pay tax on global, global income non resident will pay tax on indian income so we are deciding residential status first we are doing for individual but individual as i am again and again saying is the biggest of all only individual will take time the others will get over very fast individual only takes time the others will get over very fast okay we first learn two conditions satisfy any one and you will become a resident what are the two conditions 182 in the current year or 60 in the current year 365 in the last four years with all the general points to be noted but there are two assessees for whom condition 2 is not applicable only so they will become resident only if they satisfy condition One sixty three sixty five is not applicable. In that we did the first point. Citizen of India who is going outside for earning employment, then sixty three sixty five not applicable. Only one eighty two will be applicable. And in that, for the purpose of crew member, the CDC period shall not be counted as stay in India. Means after removing CDC period, you have to make it one eighty two. Mind you, sixty three sixty five is not applicable. So these people will become resident only with which condition? first one that is 182 correct but that will happen after removal of cdc period because cdc period is not counted as stay in india is this clear yes sir ha huh. you all are the only people in the country who are taught the concept of cdc in intermediate cdc in in intermediate generally people don't cover this but when i saw the questions the past rtp is the more as i told you that why i have issued only six chapters till now full book is ready income tax act is 1961 and all the chapters are already there in ca final so i can easily give you that book today itself but all the questions of ca intermediate level i am scanning through them so that our work becomes exhaustive and the questions that we cover in class are enough to make your exemption you don't have to study anything extra so let me take my time to give you the best book possible so that you don't have to refer to anything else so while referring to those questions of intermediate i came across a question on cdc and i was surprised this is a final ca concept but institute has decided to keep as a question in intermediate i do not want to take any chance what will happen it will consume 15 20 minutes extra no problem instead of completing my portion on 10th february if i complete on 11th or 12th that is okay instead of leaving you at 3 o'clock i review at 3:30 or 4 o'clock that is okay but not covering any topic which is relevant for your exam for me is it may be okay for you but for me it is not okay because your career is my career think about it unless and until you score good results how will my career also improve so i want to make sure that you want you you know you score the best of my historically students in intermediate learn only indirect tax and they ignore direct tax i want to change that culture direct tax should be the subject with the help of which you get your marks are you following so is the cdc part clear all right when we come to the questions we will discuss that question of cdc also let's talk about point b acha by the way this is point b in what that confusion should not be there this is point b of exception exception means 182 is applicable 6365 is not applicable okay if you are a coi coi means same citizen of india so i told you no by birth or parents birth or marrying an indian citizen honorary citizenship amendment act if you are a citizen of india or you are someone called a pio person of indian origin if you are a citizen of india or you are a person of indian origin 
what do you mean by citizen that we already discussed by birth or parents birth or let me you know i'll i'll do one thing let me write it only because anyways here also we have written citizen so let me write it once and for good how can you become citizen if you are born in india you get indian citizenship if any one of your parents both also not required any one of your parents born in india you become indian citizen something called green card green card means marry an indian citizen and settle down here you become indian citizen honorary citizenship to give you to give you an actual example to give you an actual example a uh, pakistan based singer who was a citizen of canada got indian citizenship you know that pakistani singer became indian citizen nay nee? adnan sami heard his name adnan sami name also not heard yes. there is a singer called adnan sami who was from pakistan he had canadian citizen canadian citizenship but he was granted indian citizenship out of love and affection because he showed immense respect for india and its culture so prime minister modi offered him you want to become indian citizen most welcome and with all the love and affection he became indian citizen and that controversial thing which i was talking about the citizenship amendment act in case you are interested in controversy so these are the ways of becoming what citizen of india and let me also tell you how does a person become person of indian origin for the first point only citizen is relevant but for the second point you can be coi or pio citizen of india or person of indian origin how does anyone become person of indian origin let's discuss this supposingly there is a person called mr x you want to decide whether he is person of indian origin or not then go and check the following people parents of mr x can i say parents will be father and mother hello and yes sir yes sir grandparents grandparents but then understand please grandparents will be on both sides no father side and mother side english is a very funny language english has got acute shortage of words father's parents also grandparents mother's parents also father's father is also grandfather mother's father is also grandfather father's mother is also grandmother mother's mother is also grandmother in hindi we call them dada dadi nana nani whatever you call them in other languages but do you understand father's parents and mother's parents is what we are talking about english is a very funny language if you want to give bad words to someone if you want to abuse someone in english we generally get only one word but if if you want variety of words hindi has got huge variety uh you come to maharashtra in marathi there is huge variety if if anybody wants to learn that we will keep announce a separate batch for that we will keep admissions for that i will teach that also efficiently and effectively and south indian students you teach me malayalam bad words i will teach you hindi and marathi bad words we'll keep a separate lecture for that in english there is shortage of words so for a moment don't mind me talking in hindi this is dada dadi nana nani and still if you are not comfortable father's parents mother's parents can i say four grandparents together father's side mother's side how many people totally how many people thus parents and grandparents total how many seven seven how self parents and grandparents can you totally see seven people here self is one two parents and four grandparents 1 plus 2 plus 4 hello seven people seven people can you see seven people here out of these seven people if any one also any one 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 only one 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 any one born in 
अनडिवाइडेड इंडिया आउट ऑफ दीज सेवन पीपल इफ एनी वन वॉज ऑल्सो बॉर्न इन अनडिवाइडेड इंडिया आउट ऑफ सेवन पीपल एनी वन बॉर्न इन अनडिवाइडेड इंडिया अनडिवाइडेड इंडिया मीन्स इंडिया इन इट्स प्रेजेंट स्ट्रक्चर एंड ऑल्सो पाकिस्तान एंड बांग्लादेश बिफोर नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन बिकॉज बिफोर नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन पाकिस्तान एंड बांग्लादेश वर अ पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया टू गिव यू सम स्मॉल एग्जाम्पल्स डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया फॉर टेन ईयर्स बॉर्न इन लाहौर प्रेजेंट डे पाकिस्तान अनडिवाइडेड इंडिया are you understanding if if we talk about uh, another gentleman called mr lal krishna advani who wanted to become prime minister all his life and even today at the age of he must be 93 94 now but if you offer him sir you want to become prime minister he will be immediately ready he is still waiting forever full full life he has spent waiting to become prime minister but unfortunately could not get an opportunity born in the sindh province if i am not wrong sindh see he is a sindhi sindh province of present day pakistan again so any one born in undivided india for example for example mr x was born in australia in 1985 mr x australia 1985 father in germany 1960 there has to be a gap of at least 25 years no if mr x is 85 father cannot be 83 common sense so father i am making it realistic father 1980 in germany x in australia 1985 father in germany 1960 mother in spain 61 grandfather in russia 1940 Maybe forty-eight. Again, there has to be a twenty-year gap. No, nineteen forty. Please don't ask, us, sir. How did they manage? That is not your problem. Okay, they must have managed somehow. Somehow they must have managed. This grandmother means father's mother, born in Dhaka in nineteen forty-two. And for this, you need to know geography. The Dhaka is in Bangladesh. A little geography is also required huh, for this. Hello. Dhaka is in Bangladesh. I hope you know and understand this. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That means Mr. X becomes person of Indian origin. Out of seven people, if any one born in undivided India, then you become a person of Indian origin. Tell me, are you following? Everyone. Yes. so listen if you are a citizen or a pio citizen or a person of indian origin are we clear about meaning of citizen as well as pio who is living abroad last time what was the system you are living here and you are going out for earning money living here and going out for earning money this time where are you living abroad where are you earning abroad where are you doing all your activities abroad and you are coming to india and you are coming to india most welcome most welcome ladies and gentlemen if you are coming to india very very important most important rule over here if you are coming to india on a visit on a visit on a picnic on a visit then only you will fall in the exception you are coming to india on a visit on a picnic then you will fall in the exception means if you come to india for the purpose of earning income 
then you will not fall in the exception then 182 and 6365 both will be applicable what is this point number two what are these exceptions 6365 not applicable only 182 applicable you all remember that much or forgot yes, sir, yes, sir. only 182 is applicable who are those people those who come for a visit that means if you come for earning money then both conditions apply but if you come to india for the purpose of visit then only 182 will apply 6365 will not apply now once i tell you the logic no then you will get the real beauty of this class the real fun is in knowing the logic so nothing is bigger than logic you should know the reason behind the provision focus on what i am asking see if you understand where are they living and earning where is their livelihood abroad outside india that means where will they earn money abroad and in india focus the most important thing in india they are not coming for earning money in india they are coming only for visit if they have come to visit that means whatever money they earn here they are going to spend see whenever we go on a visit or a picnic or anything we only spend money no we don't earn money that means they will earn abroad and spend in india and they have not come here to earn money they have that's the most important condition here they have not come here to earn money that means answer the following questions where will they earn money abroad, abroad. and that money will be spent where <laughs> means foreign money brought to india and spent foreign money can i say that same thing was common here also going outside for what purpose earning, earning. and will bring that money in india and spend it same thing earning outside spending in india what is common in these two exceptions exception a and b what is common in these two people yeah. earning outside spending in india earning outside spending in india and thus we want to relax the rule for them and thus 182 will not apply sorry uh, 6365 will not apply only 182 will apply earning outside spending in india and thus listen now do you understand the logic if they come to india not for visit but for the purpose of earning income that means can i say indian income they will take away and go away in that case in that case come on tell me which condition will apply 182 6365 or both of them then both will apply then both will apply who are the only people who come under exception who have come for the purpose of visit only those who have come for the purpose of visit understood ladies and gentlemen absolutely fantastic excellent so at this stage what do we learn two conditions applicable for everyone everyone means all of us whoever does not fall in exception what are the for example everyone will not cover devika and liana because they fall in exception but for normal people poor people like us two conditions what are the two conditions 182 in current year or 60 in current year 365 last four years but the two people who fall under the exceptions for them only 182 applies 6365 does not apply what are the two people those who are going outside citizen going outside for earning citizen going outside for earning but for them we will not include for the cdc uh, for the crew member we will not include cdc period and second citizen or pio who have come to india for the purpose of visit then again 6365 not applicable is that understood yes. and here in respect of this second condition which earlier used to get over here itself historically but suddenly the modi government played a very very dirty game here. these people are earning outside india and they have come to india only for the purpose of visit means in india their objective of their visit is not at all to earn money and thus 6365 is not applicable to them however very complicated huh? so please be focused please be focused however if their income is more than rupees 
फिफ्टीन लैख मोदी जी फेवरेट फिगर दिस इज मोदी जी फेवरेट फिगर इफ देर इनकम एक्सीड्स फिफ्टीन लैख विच इनकम विच इनकम विच इनकम फोकस ऑन विच इनकम any income earned in india wait please wait please don't get confused copying should not distract you huh? i don't mind you copying but if you miss the explanation then there will be trouble okay that is why we wait after every class for screenshots so there and screenshots for live batch we have the screenshot correct or no so copying should not distract and by by the way why do recording students don't get screenshots because if they want to copy they can pause the video you cannot pause me for copying but recorded so they can pause so there are some advantages of live live ek to first of all classroom physical coaching has got no replacement huh? that's the best thing when i am teaching in a classroom to explain concepts i jump from here and there here if i jump i will be out of the camera frame so i cannot jump to teach you a concept okay there is no replacement of classroom coaching in the absence of classroom permissions by government the next best thing is the live coaching that you have opted this is going to be your best decision recordings are not going to be as effective as live i am telling you i am not joking seriously and the, there is a reason the reason is very simple very simple our video lectures are encrypted encrypted means you have to activate them in any laptop or android phone ios not supported any laptop or desktop or android phone once you activate you have to enter the serial key then the lecture cannot be used on any other device we have to do encryption otherwise the, the lecture will get leaked you cannot use it on any other device and how many hours students has watched how many hours not watched our technical team has got all the data so the moment you play we will realize that your serial key is activated you watch 10 hours we know that you have watched 10 hours historically even in ca final our data tells us about 25 to 30% students who buy the lectures so supposingly i sell 3 pen drives per day, uh, 10 pen drives per day in ca final about 300 pen drives per month for ca final there are about 90 to 100 students out of those 300 who have not activated only the lectures not started watching and if they don't start watching only then then what is my responsibility in your in your career with live class comes sincerity that okay 930 this is a crazy faculty he is going to start sharp at 930 it is better that we are also prepared for the lecture at sharp 930 by 3 o'clock because you are present in class things get covered if you just wait for the recording you will not even sit for 5 hours per day every 2 hours you will take a 5 hour break Two hours study, five hours break. Two hours study, five. Hours. That is indiscipline, which comes in recorded lectures. If you can control that indiscipline, then you can go for it. Otherwise, live lectures are best. There is no replacement. Okay. Okay. Huh. So two conditions: one eighty two in the current year, and sixty three sixty five. Sixty three sixty five. Correct. Have I by mistake said sixty three at any point of time? Ah, I was checking if you are paying attention. I was checking whether you are attentive in class. It is sixty and three sixty five. Sixty and three sixty five. But two assessees sixty and three sixty five not applicable. Only one eighty two is applicable. First was citizen going outside for earning. In that crew member CDC will be excluded. Second citizen or PIO coming for a visit. But in that, if your income exceeds rupees fifteen lakh, which income? Your Indian income. Now you must be thinking before you start questioning me. So focus, please don't disturb. You must be thinking, sir. He has come to India for what purpose? Visit, and he has not come for the purpose of earning income. Purpose is visit, not earning income. Then, sir, how can he have Indian income? Listen, listen. It is possible that. he is a citizen pi you know so earlier he was living in india pay attention i am telling you about his past history earlier he was living in india once upon a time he used to be resident full year he was in india 
at that time with his income maybe he purchased some property in india maybe he purchased some shares in india some bank fixed deposits in india and these investments are giving passive income property is giving rent without active involvement property will give rent shares will give dividend the fd will give interest his today's visit in india or his today's journey to india is only for visit he has not come here to build any new source of income but can i say his existing investments will still pay him some indian income we are talking about that indian income he has not come for earning income if he comes for earning income then both conditions are applicable correct why has he come for visit but he can have investments done in the past which are generating income for him even today that is your indian income and your foreign income so anyways he is staying outside india no so majorly where is he going to earn income come on foreign, foreign. foreign. but earned from a business or profession which is controlled from india from a business or profession which is controlled from india the head office you know holding company subsidiary company when one company is controlling another company by holding more than 50% ownership the head office the holding company the control is being done from india then that foreign income will also be included in the total let me take examples of two students of class without asking them any question okay supposingly supposingly liana has got indian income from bank fd 2 lakh rupees so can i say here we will check 2 lakh rupees bank fd 2 lakh that's her indian income and in foreign she is working in a dubai company the company is in dubai the owners are in dubai the control and management everything is dubai everything is dubai that means can i say this will be nil so what's the total 2 lakh is it crossing 15 lakh rupees no then this point is not applicable to lian okay so if you come for a visit only 182 will apply 63 65 not applicable now let's take example of devika devika supposedly has a property in kochi in kerala where she is earning 6 lakh rupees rental income can i say that is her indian income and she is working in the dubai office of an indian company so the main indian company is a kerala based company this is my example ha huh, devika and everyone else the main indian company is a kerala based company that kerala company has got a branch office in dubai is it possible and the company has sent her in dubai to work in the branch office means her income is earned outside india but from where is the business controlled in india say that salary is 12 lakh rupees 1 lakh per month so what is the total of devika indian income plus foreign income only if controlled from india pay attention devika supposingly your salary is only 8 lakhs and in dubai you are earning bank interest of 2 lakh this is not going to be counted in dubai only that income will be counted which is controlled from india so anything that you earn in india will be counted and anything that you earn in foreign country will be counted only if controlled from india so if the salary is only 12 lakh it will be counted and total will become 18 lakh but if the salary is 8 lakh other income of dubai will not be counted here understood how we have to derive 15 lakh rupees so if yes understood then tell me in india which incomes you will take for 15 lakh purposes which income of india all incomes it can be rent interest dividend anything all incomes of india and from foreign which income you will take only if the business or profession is controlled from india if that total exceeds 15 lakh then this condition which condition 6365 can i say earlier we made it not applicable to these people who are coming for visit 
फर्स्ट वी सेड वॉट फर्स्ट वी सेड वॉट टू कंडीशन देन वी सेड वॉट इन दी एक्सेप्शन वॉट वी वॉट वी सेड ओनली कंडीशन वन इज एप्लीकेबल कंडीशन टू इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल करेक्ट और नो नाउ इफ यूर इनकम इज क्रॉसिंग फिफ्टीन लैख रुपीज देन कंडीशन टू ऑल्सो अगेन विल बिकम एप्लीकेबल सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव विच गॉट कैंसल्ड नो फॉर पीपल हु कम फॉर विजिट इट विल अगेन बी एप्लीकेबल बट नॉट लाइक दिस दिस विल बिकम वन ट्वेंटी एंड थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव दैट मीन्स इन द प्रीवियस इयर इट हैज टू बी वन ट्वेंटी डेज एंड लास्ट फोर इयर्स इट हैज टू बी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज कंडीशन इज एप्लीकेबल बट नॉट इन द ओरिजिनल फॉर्म वॉट वॉज द ओरिजिनल फॉर्म ऑफ कंडीशन टू सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव इज दैट कंडीशन गोइंग टू बी एप्लीकेबल बट नॉट इन दट ओरिजिनल फॉर्म ऑफ सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव इन अ मॉडिफाइड वर्जन दैट इज वन ट्वेंटी एंड थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव वन ट्वेंटी एंड थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव एंड ऑब्वियसली इफ यू टच वन एटी टू देन यू डोंट नीड यर कंडीशन वन ओनली इज कवर्ड द मोमेंट यू क्रॉस वन एटी टू यू गो टू कंडीशन वन इट सेल्फ कंडीशन टू इज नॉट एट ऑल रेलिवेंट ऑल द डिस्कशन दैट वी आर डूइंग ओनली ऑन कंडीशन टू वंस एनी एस एस सी इज डूइंग वन एटी टू डेज इन इंडिया देन दैट एस एस सी टॉपिक इज ओवर यू आर अ रेसिडेंट नो फर्दर डिस्कशन ओनली and this is finally that stage where we can declare the end of chapter ha 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 residential status ha 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 only individual is going on residential status of individual ha 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 first step under individual first step what was first step under individual resident and non resident resident and non resident are you following what have we studied here what have we studied here two conditions 182 in the current year 16 in current year 365 in last four years satisfy any one then you will become a resident, resident. that means in order to become a non resident you will have to dissatisfy both other points now i am not repeating about need not be continuous place and purpose citizenship all that that we studied equal to is also covered all that we wrote that so we discussed it then we came to two exceptions two exceptions where only 182 will apply 6365 will not apply what are the two cases where 6365 will not apply if citizen is going outside for employment or earning and in crew member cdc period will be excluded and second citizen or pio who is coming for visit only visit so if you come for income then both conditions apply but if you come for visit then only condition one applies but in that also if your income is crossing 15 lakh rupees which income is crossing 15 lakh rupees which income is crossing 15 lakh indian income plus foreign income that is controlled from india then will condition 2 again become applicable yes but a modified version 120 in the current year and 365 in the last year ladies and gentlemen have we understood step number 1 under residential status of individual actually only step number 1 is very big only step number 1 is very big step number 2 is very small and it will get over very fast so what i'll do is i will complete step number 2 so peacefully we can say harsh the biggest part that is residential status of individual is over because huf company form they will all get over in one one minute they are all very fast one one minute they will all get over and already we know why are we discussing resident non resident resident non resident because of scope of total income so we will you know a peaceful break that thank god we have finished the biggest part residential status of individual first tell me in individual under step number 2 what do we decide what is the decision that we do in step number 2 whether you are ror or r r n o r then do you have the common sense the samanya bodham the brain the thala chor do you have the brain the common sense to understand that step number 2 will be done 
सेटिस्फाइड मतलब ओनली इफ आंसर टू स्टेप नंबर वन इज रेसिडेंट बिकॉज इफ द आंसर टू स्टेप नंबर वन इज नॉन रेसिडेंट स्टोरी इज ओवर फिनिश्ड हेलो आर यू फॉलोइंग ओके सो ओनली इफ आंसर टू स्टेप नंबर वन इज रेसिडेंट एंड यर अगेन वी हैव बीन गिवन टू कंडीशन सो इन स्टेप नंबर वन वी वर गिवन हाउ मेनी कंडीशन टू कंडीशन इन स्टेप नंबर टू वी हैव बीन गिवन हाउ मेनी कंडीशन सो एट बोथ प्लेसेज वी हैव टू कंडीशन टू कंडीशन टू कंडीशन एंड दस समाइम स्टूडेंट गेट कंफ्यूज इफ आई से टू कंडीशन ऑफ रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस दे गेट कंफ्यूज सर यूर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टेप वन और स्टेप टू एंड दस टू अवॉइड दिस कंफ्यूजन generally it is for classroom convenience purposes we call them the step 1 we call them the two basic conditions to avoid confusion that means basic condition means we are talking about step number 1 resident or non resident only for avoiding confusion sir which two conditions you are talking about so in step number 1 what will be called them basic condition and in step number 2 we will call them the two additional conditions so every time we say two basic conditions you know we are talking about step 1 resident or non resident and we say two additional conditions so we are talking about step 2 ror or nor additional conditions will be checked only if basic conditions answer is resident understood the two additional conditions for deciding ror or nor ladies and gentlemen again time to focus in the basic condition you have to satisfy how many to become resident if you satisfy any one then you become resident that means if you want to become non resident so you have to dissatisfy both of course subject to the exception those two cases where Condition two is not applicable. Then we check only condition one. And in the second exception, further there is exception where income crosses fifteen lakh rupees. Then condition two will be applicable in the form of one twenty three sixty five. Correct? Here the rule is a little different. Focus. If you satisfy eyes open, ears open, please. If you satisfy. both you will become ror if you satisfy both you will become ror so this time when i will write condition 1 and condition 2 last time also i wrote condition 1 condition 2 the word that i wrote between condition 1 and 2 what was that word i wrote between the two conditions what was that word but this time i will write the word and because this time you have to satisfy both do you understand the difference in terminology here yes yes that means do you also understand that if i dissatisfy any one of them then what will i become r and or if i dissatisfy both r and or some said r and or some said non resident ladies and gentlemen if he was a non resident we would have not checked only this the fact that we are in step 1 that is why i was again and again telling you to focus on this sentence the fact that we are in step 2 we are checking the additional condition means one thing is sure that the assessee has, has become has become has become has become resident so those who said non resident are wrong you understood why you were wrong So tell me what is the answer here? If you dissatisfy both, then R.
R. Please focus. You went wrong here, so please focus on this. R and O R. That means first of all, if your answer is non-resident, you will not check step one only. Uh, step two only. Your your calculation is over then only. Step two you are checking means assessee definitely has become resident. You have to only check O R or N O R. O R N O R. O R N O R. If both conditions are satisfied, then O R. If any one is dissatisfied or both are dissatisfied, then R N O R. Understood. Now what do I have to do with you? The two conditions. This time between one condition one and condition two, the word use is going to be and because this time you have to satisfy both. Understood the fundamental difference between basic conditions where you had to satisfy any one and the additional conditions where you had to satisfy where you have to satisfy both. Yes. Very good. If you are once again, what is relevant in residential status? If you were physically present in India for a period of 730 days or more. Physically present in India for a period of 730 days or more. Listen. English, 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 English. During seven immediately preceding previous years. During what? Seven immediately preceding previous years. That means during. Can you say that in short? Like four immediately preceding previous years. What did we write? In the 365 condition? Last four years. So this time we will write last seven years. 730 days in last seven years. I think four years we have already identified from 17, 18 to 2021. 20, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21. In the 365 condition, we already identified four years. Now we get three more years. Because total seven, no? Go in reverse order and identify which are those three extra years after 17, 18. 16, 17. 15, 16, 14, 15. Total 7 years. 7 years starting on 1st April 2014 and ending on 31st March 21. 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17. 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21. 7 years. 7 years. How many days minimum? 7th. Everything else is same. Like what we wrote in the points to be noted of 60, 182 and 365. Equal to is also covered. Any place in India. Any purpose in India. Everything else is same. What is the only thing that is relevant in determination of 730 days? Physical presence in India. Okay. Okay. One thing I would like to tell you orally. See if you see if there is a need to write it. Huh? See, if, see if there is a need. If, if required, you can write it. In all the discussion that we have done till now, one thing have you all realized that residential status can change every year? True or false, residential status of an assessee can change every year. Yes, it can change. Every year you have to determine this. Because it is possible one year you were in India for 365 days and other year you did not come only to India. I will take... Please don't mind. Again and again, I am taking. See, actual examples means live, real classroom examples. Okay. So, Liana told us that full year 21, 22, she did not come to India. So, this year, she is non resident. But supposingly, after 1 4 22, COVID norms are completely relaxed. The pandemic has become endemic. And she decides to come to India and reside for the full year in India, 20 to 23. You know, next year, her residential status will become resident. So, residential status can change every year and the only deciding factor is physical presence. So, in the additional condition, 7 years, it has to be 730 days. Is this understood? And the second condition, this time it is cumulative. So, you have to fulfill both of them. You are a resident. What are you? A resident. How do you decide whether an SSE is resident? If you answer this, I will be very happy. How do you decide whether an SSE is resident? 
वन एटी टू एंड सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव अलॉन्ग विथ इट्स एक्सेप्शन करेक्ट और नो इफ यू आर अ रेसिडेंट इन एटलीस्ट 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 मीन्स कैन आई से मिनिमम कैन इट बी मोर देन दिस येस इट कैन बी मोर मिनिमम टू आउट ऑफ वंस अगेन दे यूज द सेम टर्मिनोलॉजी टेन इमीडिएटली प्रिसीडिंग प्रीवियस इयर्स वॉट डू दे से टेन इमीडिएटली प्रिसीडिंग प्रीवियस इयर्स दैट मीन्स कैन आई से टू आउट ऑफ लास्ट टेन इयर्स See in the three sixty five condition, we check last four years. So we identified which are those four years. In the seven thirty additional condition, we check seven years. So we check those extra three years. But in this this condition, we have to check total how many years before our previous year? Ten years. That means can I say from this date it will be three more years? First, let's identify which are those years. Then I will explain this condition. Which are those years? 13 14 12 13 11 12 yes or no can i say from 11 12 to 20 21 and this is strictly for may 20 to november 22 students ah huh? please understand if the attempt changes to may 23 then previous year will become 20 to 23 all these years that we have written in bracket will change are you following because for them the year changes so last four will also change last seven last 10 everything will change Okay, how many years are these? Ten years. Check assesses residential status for all these years. Means you are in twenty one twenty two. Okay, go to twenty twenty one. Check one eighty two or sixty three sixty five. Nineteen twenty one eighty two or sixty three sixty five. Because that is how we decide residence. No, how do you decide residence? 182 or 63, 65. Check for 2021, 1920, 18, 19, 17, 18, right up to 11, 12. So how many years you have checked the basic conditions? How many years? Ten years. And minimum two answers. Minimum two answers should be. Resident. Supposingly 2021 it was zero days. So non-resident. 1920 zero days non resident 18 19 full year in india so 365 days so one year done 17 18 0 16 17 0 15 16 0 12 13 0 11 12 365 so that means can i say one more year out of last 10 years that means two years resident it can be more we need minimum two can it be more yes then this condition is fulfilled and assessee will become resident and ordinarily resident so the additional conditions to make you resident and ordinarily resident are what last 7 years minimum stay should be 730 days and last 10 years last 10 years you have to be a resident for minimum 2 years then you will become ROR and if you dissatisfy any one of them, you dissatisfy both of them. Then what will you become? R N O R, R N O R. Okay. And if you are a non-resident, you will not come and check only the condition two. So are we clear about the two additional conditions to make you ROR? Yes. But Modi government again gave a clarification here. they gave a small little clarification you all remember that assessee who was covered in 63 65 then that person came to india for the purpose of a visit if the person came to india for visit then 63 65 was not applicable on that assessee but then if the income crosses 15 lakh rupees then 63 65 was applicable but not in the original form but in the modified version 12365 you remember that person so the clarification is if you are resident due to 120 plus 365 that means you are not a resident because of 182 you are not a resident because of 
63.65. You are resident only because income crossed 15 lakh rupees and the 120.365 condition became applicable to you. You are resident because of which condition? Income exceeding rupees 15 lakh. That person will compulsorily be R N O R. That person will never, never, never be treated as R O R. That person will be compulsorily treated as R N O R. Anybody who is becoming resident because of 12365, you don't need to check these two. You don't need to check these two conditions. These two conditions not applicable. That person will be compulsorily treated as R. N O R. No, not necessary. If you spend 182 days, then you become R O R also. No? Possible, no? 182. So this is only for those who are in the 120 condition, 12365. Okay. If you have become resident due to 12365, then you will always be. R N O R the additional conditions not applicable. Okay, I'll give you one last note about residential status of individual. After which residential status of individual will be over. Please pay attention. Residential status of individual will be over, and uh, I will revise it after the break because in the break food will go in your stomach, brains will go out of your body. So revision I will not do right now. Revision I will do after the break. Just a small note, a small explanation. We have by now realized that assessees are categorized into resident. I am explaining the logic first. Now pay attention. Assessees are divided into resident and non-resident. Resident has to pay tax on world income and non-resident has to pay tax on Indian income. And this depends on number of days you spend in India. So if you spend less than the required number of days, you will become non-resident. And worldwide, whichever country levies income tax, they all have similar principles. May not be same, but similar. To make you resident or non-resident. You all are learning today for the first time. That is why I say you all are kids. Millennial kids. But these people are aware of these rules. The rich businessmen, the industrialists, they are aware. So what they do is, their 365 days, they split into multiple countries. 40 days in India, 40 days in Japan, 40 days in Australia, 40 days in New Zealand. In a way that they become non-resident everywhere. Look at their brains. They become what? Non-resident everywhere. Not just India, but everywhere they are non-resident. Globally, there are two principles of levy of tax. What are the two principles? Residence and source. But they have cleverly avoided which principle? Residence by splitting their 365 days into different countries. You see the brain that they have used here. Modi ji said, I am not going to leave you now. Modi ji said, if you are a citizen of India, who are you? Citizen of India. And your same income crosses 15 lakh rupees. I am writing same income because it is the same which was there in 120.365. Can you define for me what is this income for which we had 12365 15 lakh rupees rule? Any income from Indian sources plus any income from but only if controlled from India. So, who are you? A citizen of India. Your income has exceeded rupees 15 lakh. We are clear which 15 lakh? And you are this is what Modi ji did. You are not a resident in any other country. You are not a tax resident. A tax resident. You all understood, no? Nationality citizenship is different from tax residence. You are not a tax resident in any other country. So who are the target? These people who stay for few days in all countries. They are our target. Did you realize that? You know what will Modi ji do? Tidding, 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 tidding. Or if this music was not okay, 
I'll give you another music. This was very popular in recent times. You want this music, everyone? Coffin dance? In one line, if I have to put it, if you are not a resident anywhere else, you will be treated as a resident in India. Not a resident anywhere else, you will be treated as a resident in India. Imagine this. Imagine what happened because of this. Imagine. UAE does not levy income tax. Think about it. If UAE does not levy any income tax, that means you will never be, uh, Devika, you will never become a tax resident of UAE because there is no income tax in UAE. Will you ever become a tax resident of UAE? No. But if your income exceeds 15 lakh, now is it possible that your salary in UAE, the, the Indians who are working in Dubai, that salary is more than 15 lakh rupees. Is it possible? And the business is controlled from India? We will treat you a resident in India. And resident means world income taxable, means what was Mr. Modi's target? Indian citizens. See, this is Indian citizens who are earning income in Dubai. So, they are not a tax resident anywhere. And their income is more than 15 lakh rupees. I want income tax on that. And how will I take income tax? Because income is on outside India. So, outside India, we can take tax only if you are a resident. We have decided to make you a resident. In the budget speech, they did not put this condition only. 15 lakh condition also was not there. That means if you are not a resident in Dubai, one rupee also you want, it will be taxable in India because you are a resident. The Dubai ka sheikh called Modi ji, Modi ji, have you lost your brain? What are you doing? That means all the Indians who are working in Dubai, their income will become taxable in India because they are citizens of India. Are you following? We will make you resident and thus Indian, uh, India will take tax on the income that you are earning in Dubai also. And thus, when they made the finance act, this is what I told you, budget speech we can undergo changes. So at the time of passing of the bill, conversion into finance act, they incorporated this condition and said that this will apply only if your income is exceeding rupees 15 lakh. So if you are a citizen of India and your income is exceeding 15 lakh rupees, which income? Indian income, foreign if controlled from India. And you are not a tax resident in any other country. Then you will be treated as a tax resident in India. Understood? That means in short, your foreign income will be taxed in India. But with one relaxation that you will always be treated as RNRC. Because of that 15 lakh, these people became resident because of 15 lakh, the 12365 people. So for them also we kept the condition of RNOR. And these people are also becoming resident because of 15 lakh. So for them also we are keeping the condition of RNOR. Whoever is becoming resident because of 15 lakh income will always be treated as RNOR. Understood? So if in short, in a nutshell, if you are not a resident anywhere else, you will be treated as a resident of India. That is the big change that has taken place and it is going to drastically affect Indians working abroad badly affect those indians okay full revision of residential status of individual we will be doing after the break